Hi, everybody. Back out at the hangar, uh, working on the mid fuse bulkhead. That's what it's called mid fuselage bulkheads. So, when, remember when I was talking about getting competent help? Well, I guess this is just as bad my fault as anyone else's. Uh, yeah, so when I had those people helping, and it's funny, the actual last video cut out with about 10 minutes left, because all we, all we did was we finished uh, riveting these up together. And there was a few that we couldn't rivet, and I thought that was weird looking, because I wasn't paying attention. Nope was not paying attention, and that bulkhead is upside down. Thankfully, there were only 10 rivets on each side that, uh, that we'd done, so I was able to drill them out. Actually, I was in shock. I drilled all of them out perfectly. And that was the trick. So the trick was, you saw that, uh, you heard those ryth rhythmic knocks, so I have a nice center hole punch. That puts nice big fat holes right in the middle of the rivet. I mean, I've got I've got a, 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 um, a rivet extractor tool, and for the most part it works. But it really only works if you get to be pushed if you're pushing against like thick metal. Uh, you know, these are channels, so there's clecos, there's rivets. It's hard to get a good seat, even if you have a nice block of wood that's the right size. So easier just to make a center hole punch. Use a regular drill. And drill straight through the middle. And all I had to do was flip it around, made sure all the holes were clean, and rivet it back in. It's perfectly fine. An annoyance to be sure, but a good lesson for me. This is why, look, I love I, I love people to help. And anyone that's going to be building their own plane, you know, we love help. Uh, it's great to get other people involved. The thing is, only one person at a time can be involved. I think that's my new limit. I can have one person helping me at a time. Having four people, while wow, great, you know, they're they're excited. If there's four people out here helping me, it's because they want to be out here helping me. Uh, which can be bad, because they're like, oh, give me something to do, give me something to do. Oh, I'll do this. I'm like, ooh, don't just start doing things. That's how you wind up having stuff like, oh, I don't know, bulkheads riveted upside down. I was a little shocked that uh, it would fit upside down, but didn't matter. It was all fine in the end. Oh, for the love of God, is there a 737 outside the hangar? Now, let me turn that down. Uh, okay, that's better. Okay, so got everything on the proper way, and the next thing that you'll do is you're going to be working um, and reaming so this is the first time that we've done any serious reaming uh, that was a very a nice six fluted reamer bit that you saw in the drill press so the idea of a reamer is this is you know it's a high precision drill bit used when you've got you know two or three pieces of metal riveted together and it needs to be you know a seamless hole you know as good as Vans is at punching holes and making them you know exact you know, where a very, you know, large A in bolt's going to go through, you know, in a critical stress point, you basically want it to be as snug of a fit as possible. So you use the reamer bit, makes a perfect hole, you do it on a drill press so you're sure it's perpendicular, works out great. And you want it to work out great, because that's where the wing attaches to the fuselage. Well, one of, one of many points, but it's one of, it's... It's an attachment. You want it to be good. So that's what we're working on. It's basically the rear wing spar fuselage attached horn. I forgot what they call it. There's a name for it. I don't remember. It's two pieces. You will... It's two thick eighth of an inch pieces that... Uh, which means a lot of deburring. That you will flush... Double flush rivet together. And then you will bolt it to that, uh, that bulkhead. And you do it in a very exact order. So you'll ream the outside hole of the spar with its doubler and the uh, side brace. Then you can bolt on the uh, 
or temporarily bolt on the horn. Then you can rim another hole, including the horn, after you've click coated in, because there is a click coat point that you can use to hold the uh, you know, the horn in place. Rim that. You bolt the inside hole. Then you've got. Then you can rim the other holes. And then you bolt the whole thing on. You do it on both sides, and it's easy. It's done. So that's what you see me doing here. Is a little bit of double flush riveting. Do a countersink both sides, and then. Put an extra flathead rivet and squeeze the crap out of it. Here you see some more rimming. So this is one of those things where I actually went through the plans first. To, okay, you can see me. It's hard to see, but I'm spraying lube on that uh, reamer. But what I did was I went through the instructions and I noticed and at the beginning of all the chapters it says, you know, special tools needed. Uh, and I just read through all the instructions so it's like, oh, ream this, ream that. It's like, oh, those are four different size reamers. So I'm going to order those now because they can get pretty expensive for high, high quality ones. Uh, you know, I think I was lucky and I was paying like 18 a piece or something. So anyway, thanks for joining. Uh, in the next video, we will continue working on the spar season.